Okay, this is going to be very similar to what we did a couple months ago with solving systems. You're just solving quadratic systems. Now, the weird thing about this is you guys are not necessarily going to know what these shapes look like. Um, so I'm going to start with one like, like this. And we do this because this is a pure algebra technique, and you don't necessarily need to know what these shapes look like in order to answer this question. It's more fun if you do. Um, you guys know what the shape of the second one is. 2x plus y equals negative 1. What would that graph to? A line. Um, do you know what the first one would be? Close. It's a circle, but the x is stretched differently than the y. So it's an oval, or what we call an ellipse. And if I take an ellipse like this, and I cross a line through it, look at think of how many possible intersections there could be. Two. There could also be none. Or there could also be one. one. Are, the, are those the only possibilities? Yes. Yeah. Probably not going to get three intersections. So let's start with the hypothesis that there are two. And I know that there are at most two, and there are at least zero. Remember, at least means greater than or equal to, and at most means less than or equal to. Um, the best way to do this is actually just to kind of do either a substitution or elimination like we always did. So I'm going to kind of treat this as my system and start with maybe the second one and say we're going to solve the second one for y is equal to negative 2x minus 1 and then take this and do what with it? Plug it in to the first one. So I'm going to get 4x squared plus negative 2x minus 1 squared equals 25. And if you can solve that, uh, you can find the possible x values where this thing intersects. So the only way that we really have to solve that is to multiply it all out and to add like terms. 4x squared plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 25. Add like terms. 8x squared plus 4x minus 24 is equal to 0. Divide both sides by... Four. Good, Simba. 2x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Let's operate under the hypothesis that we can factor that, because that's going to be easier than completing the square or quadratic formula. Be aware that you may have to use completing the square or quadratic formula, but this one actually does factor. 2x and x. Um, I want to get to 1, so 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 1 is 3. I'm going to go plus 4 minus 3, and you get x is equal to 3 halves, or x is equal to negative 2. Now, those give you the x values. We are looking for ordered pairs. So how am I going to get the y values? Yeah, plug it back in right here. Um, that's what's going to do it. So I'm just going to kind of do an if. If x is equal to 3 halves, y is equal to negative 2 times 3 halves minus 1, which is negative 3 minus 1, or negative 4. Ordered pair would be 3 halves, negative 4. Got it? Are we done? Yep. If x equals negative 2, y is equal to negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Uh, that is 4 plus 1. No, it's minus 1, you're right. Negative 4, or sorry, 4 minus 1. I call that 3. And my other solution is negative 2, 3. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the set notation for this with two ordered pairs. shouldn't be that difficult. Do you guys remember when we did set notation and I put braces around an ordered pair? And you thought that that was kind of insane, that I would do braces and ordered pairs? Well, now it's going to make a little bit more sense. I'm just going to list the two. Here's an ordered pair that works. And here's an ordered pair that works. And now you see why we do the braces around them. Yes, Kate? Um, how do you know it works? How do I know both of these work? Yeah. 
um, well, we got x values through legitimate means, and I plug them back into the y value. You can test them. I know they both work in the second equation. I also know they both work in the first equation because I really got the x values through a very, very legitimate means by that first one. Um, I never squared both sides, so I don't actually have to check. So if, you end up both if you end up squaring both sides, you, you always need to check your answers. Yeah, I mean, the two domain restrictions that you've studied are divide by zero and taking the square root of a negative number. That's, that's not happening here at all. But if you have radicals that you're plugging back into radicals, you need to check. If you have denominators where you have a variable, you need to check. Those are the only two cases we've really done. And it's not, sorry, it's not square roots, but like even power roots. Remember, fourth root, six roots. Um, but really, we always come up with square roots. Okay, number two. X squared minus y squared, or 9y squared, is equal to 9, and x plus 6y is equal to 3. Watching time, I'm going to go ahead and just start opening the uh, graphing calculator. I'm going to see if we have enough time to get to it. Uh, but I want to show you that you actually can get a visual in your graphing calculator of what these look like, so long as you open up the relation part and graph it as a relation. If you graph it as a relation, you can type in x squared minus 9y squared equals 9 and x plus 6y equals 3 and get a, uh, a thing. What's interesting, you remember how when you graphed you got, and I'll show you what this looks like. This, this looks like this right here, like the first one, and the second one looks like that. So you, how many intersection points? Two. Two. When you graph it like this where in a relation, to find an intersection, you remember how you used to do left bound, right bound? or lower bound, upper, upper bound, lower bound, or whatever, however I said it, um, you actually have to do bottom left corner to top right corner, and it's going to draw a box around it. And it's to, you have to like target it by a box. It's just going to say bottom left, top right, and you move the box over, and then it will find the intersection. But back to this, let's do it by hand. Um, the second one is linear. So should we just be different and solve it for x? x is equal to 3 minus 6y. That's probably the easiest because x is almost close to being isolated. And take that and plug it into the first one. So instead of x squared, it's 3 minus 6y squared minus 9y squared is equal to 9. You actually, if you're really, 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 really good with your factoring, you could take a 9 out of everything right now. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to confuse you just yet, but a 9 goes out of everything. How come you know a 9 goes out of the first term? Because it's 3 squared, right? You pull a 3 out and then square it, and you get a 9 out of everything. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. 6 squared is 36y squared, minus 6 times 3 is 18, times 2 is 36y, plus 9, minus 9y squared equals 9. I'm going to take a 9 out of everything now, just to make life easier a little easier. 4y squared minus 4y plus 1 minus y squared equals 1. Be really, really, really happy when your constants drop out. Like the 1's go away. And you get a 3y squared minus 4y equals 0. It's really easy to factor that. What's the strategy you use to factor? Take out a y. Greatest common factor y times 3y minus 4 equals 0, and you get y equals 0, or y is equal to 4 thirds. <clears throat> so then we go back and we check the, uh, the equation right here. I'm going to take the uh, y equals 0 and plug it in. I'm going to take the y equals 4 thirds and plug it in. If y equals 0, x is equal to 3 minus 6 times 0, which we call 3. And I say that 3, 0 is an ordered pair. And then if y is equal to 4 thirds, x is equal to 3 minus 6 times 4 thirds, uh, which is 3 minus 8, negative 5. and negative 5 4 thirds is a solution. So my two solutions are 3 0, negative 5 
four thirds. I'm going to hold here for just a second, but I'll come back if you need. And then let's move over to the graphing calculator that hopefully should be up. Um, it's going to be a little bit off because I changed resolutions. There we go. Uh, let's add a graph. And what I need to do, I'm just going to do this once. You can follow along or you can kind of go back over it. I'm actually going to go to the menu and change the graph entry edit to relation mode instead of function mode. And I'm really carefully going to try to, try to type in the x squared minus 9y squared. Oops y squared equals 9. Enter. It graphs 1. It's kind of similar to what I showed you it would look like. And then just because you can, we're going to go just do a second one and type tab and put a second one x plus 6y equals 3. And that gives me the second one. I don't really need to change my window, but I'm just going to tighten it a little bit. Make this like a 4 to f negative 4. Four and negative four. Okay, that just kind of expands it a little bit. And I'm going to move these uh, out of the way. Oops, that was a uh, function of me touching it. Nope. Okay, I'm just not going to try that. It wants to grab like the axes and stuff. Label. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, just to show you how you can do an intersection on this, I'm going to go menu, analyze graph, intersection. Uh, it says first corner. So if you picture drawing a rectangle or a, a square around an intersection point, I just always go lower left and then top right. See how it's drawing a square? So second corner is just like top right. And it gives me an intersection, negative five and one and a third. And then I go menu, analyze graph, intersection, just lower corner, move it up, draw it up, and three, zero. So that's a graphical way to verify your solutions. And if you ever want to go back to function mode, just go menu, graph entry, edit, and change it up to function mode. And that's kind of your basic y equals. You're going to see the graph still there. It just changes how you put functions in. Um, so you guys can see those blue lines are not functions in a, in a classic sense. They fail a vertical line test, but you can still graph them on your graphing calculator if you go to relation mode. OK, last problem. We're going to do the intersection of this, which is x squared minus y squared equals 12, and this, xy is equal to 8. So shape-wise, and I have a built-in graphing calculator in my head, um, I know that this first one looks a lot like the other one we just did like that. And the second one, I'm going to try to draw this. I have to tilt this. So that's, hang on, that's more like that. So the second one is kind of like this, where it's yeah, that's right. This one's going to be more like this. How many intersection points? Okay, so follow me along on this one. Uh, we're going to take this second one and solve it for x or y. It actually doesn't matter. So solve it for x or y. Pick one. Solve for y. Solve for y. Y equals 8 over x. You guys see why it kind of doesn't matter? I'm just going to x equals 8 over y, whatever. Plug it in uh, to one of them, and you're going to get x squared minus 8 over x squared is equal to 12 or x squared minus 64 over x squared is equal to 12. Now, we right away know something x cannot be. Zero. zero. So if you get any points where x is zero, that's out. So that's like a domain restriction thing to just be aware of. Um, you can see that in the original problem. 8y equals 8. x could not be zero, could it? Because you can't multiply zero times something and get 8. Uh, what's a good next step here? Bogo. You could. That is not a bad step. Um, I'm, I am kind of want to do that just to show that that's a thing, and that kind of ties in. I didn't think about that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're going to let u equal 1 over, or sorry, u equal what? X squared. U equal x squared. So I'm going to get x 
u minus 64 over u is equal to 12. Okay. Clear, the Clear the denominator. That'd be u squared minus 12u minus 64 is equal to 0. Can you factor it? Can you break up 64? What is it? 16 and 4. Good. Minus 16 plus 4. And you get u is equal to 16 or u is equal to negative 4. It wasn't really a u, was it? So you get x squared equals 16 or x squared equals negative 4. So what's x? Plus minus four. Plus or minus two i. Square root of negative four, two i. This should make sense. We have four possible x values. What was our power of four kind of way up here if I'd multiplied through by an x squared? Like if you cleared everything with an x squared, what would the power have been? Four. I, I would expect to have four possible solutions here. Only two of them are real. But we're going to go ahead and work with the other two that are not real and kind of put them back in. So you're going to have kind of two possibilities here, so, or four possibilities here. So let's say x equals 4 is one possibility. If x equals 4, y was equal to 8 over x. I'm stealing that from right up here. So 8 over 4, which is 2. That means that 4, 2 is a solution. If x equals negative 4, y is equal to uh, negative 2. So 4, negative 2 is a solution. If x is equal to 2i, y is equal to 8 over 2i, which is the same as 4 over i. And you guys know you cannot leave it like that. Do you remember how to get something out of i form when it's 4 over i? How to move that? Multiply by i over i. And you get 4i on the top and negative 1 on the bottom, which is just negative 4i. When x is equal to negative 2i, y is equal to negative 4 over i, which is the same as 4i. So my four ordered pairs are going to be 4, 2, uh, negative 4, sorry, this should be negative 4, negative 2, 2i, negative 4i, or negative 2i, 4i. Okay, who are my lazy people out there that want a quicker way to write that? It's not when you use the double root necessarily, because the double root means that you have it repeated twice. We don't have anything repeated here. What I would do is I would say four and when we're going to do plus or minus four on the first one. On the second one, does it match? If I do plus minus, is the plus go with the plus and the minus go with the minus? So I can do a plus or minus there. This doesn't mean that either one could be positive or negative. It means that. When 4 is positive, 2 is positive, and when 4 is negative, 2 is negative. That's what that means. So if I do plus or minus 2i on this one, how do I change it so that it's opposite? Yeah, minus plus. We've done that before, and you guys have seen that before. Um, I had never seen that until I actually started using Word and typing these things up in Word, and I saw the minus plus symbol, and I looked up what it meant. And it's kind of cool, because like, that just means when 2i is positive, 4i is negative. When 2i is negative, 4i is positive. So either one of these, if you really don't want to be confused, do that. Just list them out. Um, but if you want to be confused or just kind of want to challenge yourself and play around with it, do the second one. Okay, we are done. Uh, the homework for this is 9.8 homework. page. I should not write this because if I ever change this in years to come, then this is not going to be accurate. Uh, but the directions are really important here. So that's the homework itself. Your directions are to solve over the complex numbers. Meaning, if there's i's in there, you need to use them. You need to show them. 
That's what solve over the complex numbers means. What if I just wanted to solve and not have the i's? What would I say? Solve over the real numbers. So real numbers means everything you can graph. <coughs> Two of those intersection points you would have seen by graphing. One of them you would not. Okay. Now I go here. I hit stop.